Hi, I'm Christopher John Farley, a senior editor with The Wall Street Journal. Welcome to the WHA Cafe. The Star series Outlander is beginning its second run of episodes to wrap up its first season. And I'm here with the stars of that show, Sam Hewen, who plays Jamie, a Scottish soldier on the show, and Tobias Menzies, who plays a, a dual role. You play both a British historian and a British captain. Welcome to the Wall Street Journal. Thanks very much. Thank you for having us. Now, for people who are just joining the show as it ends its first season, Tobias, can you wrap it up? Can you, can you catch them up in like 30 seconds or less? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, quite okay. a challenge. Um, the story begins uh, in just after the Second World War in 1945. We meet uh, a young woman called Claire and her husband Frank and they're reunited after the war. They go on a second honeymoon to sort of revive their marriage. And there she goes for a walk and there's some magic or some standing stones and she touches these stones and through some magic of these stones she travels back 200 years. And so the majority of the, the story is told in Jacobite Scotland, 1743. Uh, and there she meets uh, a young Highlander um, who she falls in love with. Uh, and the story is really her in a sort of foreign uh, time foreign land, trying to survive and trying to get back to her, her own time, back to her husband, uh, and so sort of the adventures that ensue from that. That was no. more than 30 seconds, I think, but it's <laughs> pretty yeah. good going. Well, no scoring here. Now, Sam, I understand that this is actually a Scottish way of pronouncing your last name, Sam Hewen, and I'm not quite doing it right. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty close. Uh, Hewen. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's basically, it sounds like if you're trying to spit or... <laughs> pull up some, uh, pull up some, some phlegm. I think it's, it sounds pretty, pretty realistic. Uh, now you were born in Scotland, and I'm wondering, doing this historical show set in, in 18th century Scotland, did you learn anything about your homeland you didn't know before? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know one of the joys of this show is that it is set in Scotland, and, and we have the joy to, to film there. And uh, it's been great to rediscover my country, you know, to, to dig deeper into the, the culture and the heritage, to, into the Gaelic culture, the, the music, the, the language. Um, and I think when you watch the show, you know, that all comes across and it's been great to, to bring that to life. Now, my, my wife loves the show, but there's a scene early on, I'm not going to give things away, that involves you and spanking. That I think it's, it's sort of controversial. Well, uh, how did you feel about it when you saw that, that scene in the script? It's a vicious rumor that, uh, that no, it's, um, it is definitely, it's there from the books. Um, obviously, Diana Gabaldon has written these, this fantastic series of books, and um, we don't shy away from anything that's in those books. Obviously, we do like to treat anything of, of an intimate nature or, or a violent nature with, you know, a lot of care. And um, I know that the, the producers and, and directors and ourselves, you know, work very hard on those scenes to, to make them work for a modern audience. And, and I think we do that. It, it comes out of um, Claire putting everyone in danger and Jamie has to teach her a lesson. Were you worried at all? Is this going to cost me any female fans if I'm seeing Eki spanking a woman, even though it's a historical show? I, I mean, I certainly don't worry about you know what the reaction should be we just have to do the best job we can but I think we were very aware that you know if for a modern audience this is um, sort of a pretty heinous thing to do but um, we have to remember that you know in the 1700s that she puts everyone in danger and he's teaching her something that he's learned you know whether or not he totally agrees with what he's doing he knows that he has to do it is his duty um, and then fallout from that is that their relationship is tested that they have to find some some common ground and ultimately it pushes their relationship forward. Well, you, I mean, 50 Shades of Grey is, is anything to go by. It's um, not yes. a bad thing. Well, this is not, not to be about pleasure, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, there may have been some pleasure taken in it. I don't know. But um, yeah, for sure. Um, it's, uh, it's an element in the books. And there's a lot of other dark elements in the book as well. So it's sort of the 51st shade of grey, basically. <laughs> yeah, or 18th now, century shades. Now, you're, you play two characters. I do. Uh, one character is a caring husband um, from the 20th century. The other one is a psychopath who involved in an, an attempted rape to open up the, uh, the, the, the new set of um, episodes. Mm. Is one character more challenging or even more fun to play than the other? Um, I mean, I, I, what, what is very enjoyable about this job for me is the, really the, the variety. So it's an unusual proposition, you know, especially in a TV show, to have almost a, a theatrical device, to have some, one actor play uh, two different roles. Um, they are connected by family. You know, you know, one is a, a descendant of the other. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed, yeah, the sort of switching between the two. Obviously, I mean, they say the devil has the best songs, so, you know, there's a lot of fun to be had with, uh, with Jack, who is the sort of the villain of the piece, uh, and it's a sort of study in sadism, and that's, 
um, yeah, very rich and interesting sort of territory. Um, but Frank, I think, I mean, I think we've done, um, we've in a way we've drawn Frank out more than maybe he is in the books. And um, yeah, I'm very fond of him too. Also in the show, it deals a lot with, you know, people in Scotland rebelling against their English overlords. And during the shooting of the show, there was, of course, this vote on Scottish independence. Mm -hmm. And I know, uh, Sam, that you sort of spoke out on your feelings about that. Mm. Um, how do you feel about how the vote went? And did it have any kind of weird um, reverberations on actually doing a show that deals with some of these issues? Yeah, it's, um, it was a, you know, a fantastic period in, in Scottish history. And, and you know, just by almost by chance, you know, that we're still talking about it, you know, 200 years down the line that um, or, or, or longer that, you know, the same themes are, are you know, relevant in the show. But because um, you, you wanted you wanted to, the, the independence vote so to be yes. Right? I, I was very much for the yes. I mean, when I first heard about the, the arguments, I thought it wasn't a great idea. Um, and then just having spent time there and, and discussing it further, I thought it was a chance for more democracy for Scotland. Scotland is, um, without going into too much detail, but represented uh, in Britain, in, in Westminster, and uh, there's, there's various things like there's the House of Lords that aren't actually voted for yet, have more power than, than the Scottish government. Um, and it just seemed that the, the people of Scotland would have more control over what happened to them. Um, unfortunately, the vote went the other way, um, but it was, it was pretty close. But also, I think the most important part of the whole process is that it's got people involved in politics again. There's, up until recently, it's been a lot of um, apathy and, and voter apathy and, and, you know, the mm. ratings have been very low. And in this, I believe it was like uh, in, the, in the low 90s percent of people turned up to vote. And uh, it's got people talking again about politics, and I think it's going to be good for British politics as well. And I'm wondering, Tobias, mm. as a Brit, mm. were you emotionally involved in the Scottish independence vote, or did you think, you know, were you just sort of watching as an observer? Yeah, I mean, I, th I went through, it was a very, obviously a very interesting place to be working at mm. that time. Um, I was very conflicted because I felt that I was fairly sure that Britain would be the lesser without Scotland. But it was hard not to be kind of excited by the energy that you could feel in the country at the mm. idea of being given their own, being given sort of more autonomy. So um, by the end, I could really feel the disappointment that was present on the day after when it hadn't gone through. And um, I think it would have, it would have been very interesting for Scotland. But uh, uh, honestly, uh, from a point, of, from English point of view, I think we would have definitely been the lesser to have lost. You know, mm. Scotland's a very, very vibrant country and, and, and contributes a great deal to Britain. So yeah. I did, I, my sense is I sh I'm fairly sure, that given how close it was, it will be a decision that will be revisited in the not too distant future. We're already talking about it, I believe, yeah. Uh, now, back on the show, I, I wonder, how, you do a lot of horse riding mm. in the show, you do some sword fighting, you have some gun play. How do you prepare for those scenes? Did you go in knowing how to, to ride a horse, to sword fight? I mean, these things that you knew just growing up somehow? Uh, no, I think uh, every actor, uh, we always like to, to maybe slightly embellish what's on our CV. And, uh, if you look on any actor's CV, it will say you can ride a horse. <laughs> yes, that, ride a horse. all true. Juggle, tightrope walk. <laughs> exactly. Anything you want, I can do it. I you think it's on my job. CV too, and I'm a journalist. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, we, uh -huh. we got into it. And I'd ridden in other shows and other productions, but we have a fantastic team uh, of riders, and they, you know, we had great lessons. We were taught to ride. And it very much, again, became part of my character. Um, I love my horse dearly, and, and I, I felt very confident with it as well and I think it's important for Jamie's character he's spent a lot of time with horses and um, so it was important for me that I could ride well um, and then yes we have a lot of it's a very physical show um, we had like boot camp especially for you yeah it is yeah and I, I really wanted to do all my own stunts and do all the fights and I, and I did and I think it's uh, it's just a, a boy's own adventure, really. And Tobias, you've been on other shows that mm. have either a period feel yeah. or actually were period pieces. Of course, you were on Rome and you played Brutus. Yes. Uh, you've been on Game of Thrones. Mm. Uh, how does this show compare to some of those other shows in terms of the, the way it's conceived, the feeling on the set? Can you compare your experiences? Yes. I mean, I think as a, just a, a production experience, it really reminds me of the shows I've done with HBO uh, in terms of the sort of scale, um, the, you know, the production values, um, very, very high. And it's exciting to work and make TV like that. Uh, as as a, a piece of television, I think it's very different from certainly different from Thrones, uh, and I know there have been some comparisons, but for me, I think it's a very different beast. You know, obviously Thrones is um, an invented, imagined world, 
Um, what, Diana, what you know, the books that Diana has written are rooted very definitely in a you know a very definite period of history, um, which is. Um, I, on one that I don't think people know a lot about, so it's been quite exciting. One of the interesting things about the show is bringing that period of history to, mm. to people's attention. Yeah, and part of the attraction of the show is that idea of time travel, of the romance of maybe being back in the 18th century yes. in Scotland. Mm. Now, from my, from my feeling, I would want to be back there. I like the 21st century. I like having, having a vote. But you guys, would you want to um, go back to that time? Is that something that would attract you if you had the choice that Claire, the character, on, this, on your show mm, has, of has traveling back in time. Would you want to do that? Wow. I, there's a simplicity that's a, appealing in that you know a man's word is his word, and, and uh, it seems that you know you say something and you, and you don't do it, then you can be held to account. And I think um, you know maybe it was a bit more brutal that kind of. Uh, uh, you know, policies or, or sort of moral code, but um, in, in a way there is something appealing about it, a bit more freedom, but yeah, no, I don't think I'd last very long. I agree, I mean, there's something uh, uh, thrilling about uh, the sort of, I guess, the genuine freedom that you get is the sense that there was, the, and that came obviously with a lot of danger, a lot of responsibilities, but mm. I don't think I would last very long with the, uh, the dentistry they had then. <laughs> no, <laughs> but we're, we're entering a period as well where you know, things are very much about to change, you know. We find out very early on that this group of, you know, this, this race of people, you know, the, the Highlanders, the, the, the Gallic culture, they're, they're, they're doomed, they're gonna be wiped out. And Claire realizes this, this from the, the Battle of Culloden and, and the clearances that happened afterwards. So there's this, this element that the world is gonna change, you know, that the, the British army are there and mm. that, that they're gonna change the landscape. And I think that's quite exciting. Well, Sam Hewen, Tobias Menzies, uh, the show is Outlander, finishing up its first season. Thanks a lot for coming to the Wall Street Journal. Thanks, Thanks a lot for having us. Cheers.